Hi everyone, it's Michael Citron with the Citron Real Estate Group coming to you from another Facebook Live. This is Ask Michael Monday. It's episode 31. I'm happy and excited to have Jaron Mansell here. He's with Access Insurance Underwriter, LLC. He's a homeowner's insurance uh, specialist. Um, we met Jared, I would say, maybe three, four years ago. We were introduced by Joe Palapoli with Supreme Lending. So a shout out to Joe for referring us to Jared. He's helped a lot of our clients um, really, really informed on you know, giving you the best advice on purchasing homeowners insurance. As we know, we're, we've had some crazy storms and weather. We're dealing with it as, right, as we speak here. But we've had some hurricanes come through and it's been really great asset to have Jared a part of our team when when we uh, bring buyers to our properties and get them you know the best advice uh, Jared's there answer their questions before we put offers on houses after you know we go under contract so it's really good because so many properties have different ages they have you know locations you know insurance can fluctuate crazy so I appreciate you coming out Jared it's, it's an honor to have you and You've done so much work for us, saved deals, got clients into properties, you know, on their budget, which is exactly what we need to do when we're helping our clients out. So kudos to you and your team. Right. And, and then Jared also handles our investment properties. He's done an amazing job in, in helping us out, um, get us, you know, really great rates and, you know, great coverage and explain the process. I, I really like that. I, I think it's, it's an asset to really understand it because this business you deal with is, is, is changing. Um, so tell us a little about your company, your experience, and uh, yourself. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for having me, Michael. I appreciate really appreciate this today. Um, I've been in the industry now myself for the last six years. I left a career in law enforcement prior to that. Uh, born and raised right here in the South Florida market. I've got three small children. Uh, just live for those guys. Um, thing is, really, what sets us apart? What's really different about what we do is we are an independent brokerage. We've been around for 15 years. I've made it my mission to specialize in homeowners insurance for the last six years. And we really do like to think that we do it better than anyone else because that is our niche. Uh, we don't necessarily claim to be the experts on the commercial side or even some of the health insurance products. But homeowners insurance really is our niche and we've really stamped our name to that market here in South Florida. I like that because when we, you know, some people come to us and they'll say, you know, this person's trying to sell me on, you know, homeowners insurance, car insurance, life insurance, health insurance, you know, people are selling so many things and yeah. I understand, you know, people are trying to make a living, but I really like that you are the one-stop shop when it comes to homeowners insurance. I like to say I'm a residential specialist. If you, if you're looking right. to purchase, you know, something else, commercial real estate, I can refer you to a great commercial agent. I focus on one thing and I think that's a great asset that you're able to focus on the need at that moment, especially. Right. And I think clients are drawn to you by, by being able to focus on the problem, not so much the problem at hand, but what they need to get at that moment to make a decision to move forward on the purchase, which is somebody's largest financial asset. So, you know, people out there can go with a, a ton of different companies. I mean, there's just everybody, you see the commercials on TV. Why should somebody go with your insurance and your, your company and your team over the competition? So let me start by saying I have an amazing team behind me. That, that's really how we arrived at this point today. It's all about my team and my support staff that kind of keep the, keep the train on the track. We have access to over 40 different really great private insurance companies. We know the market inside and out. And within that network of carriers, we're riding a very large amount of volume, I think relatively speaking. So uh, on a decent month, we're doing anywhere from about 120 to 150 new home closings per month wow. and that level of experience as well as the amount of volume that we're placing with these insurance carriers really gives us a lot of great one-on-one -on -one access with the executives at various companies the claims departments and a lot of the really uh, the pros in the industry to help get things done that's a great answer what factors should I, a person looking for homeowners insurance consider when they're you know shopping for homeowners insurance when you're trying to compare various companies one of the things I would really stress is that it's not always apples to apples. If you receive a quote from us, oftentimes we'll have a pretty brief summary with a breakdown of what's being offered, uh, some key points to look for. We're going to give you not just the price and throw an attachment at you, but we're going to break it down a little bit in the body of the email. And 
I have seen that in some other cases, a lot of other agencies might just send you an attached file or throw a number out there without explaining it. So when you're trying to compare various options, just understand that aside from the company's name or aside from the price, it's not always apples to apples. A uh, big problem we're having right now with the insurance industry here in South Florida is that a lot of carriers are now starting to either reduce or completely eliminate water damage claims. Wow. When that property reaches the 40 year old mark, it's considered a problem in South Florida, at least uh, currently, and the levels of coverage are being drastically reduced or eliminated. So that, that can be a big problem. Yeah, we're, we're dealing with it for sure. Why do homeowners need uh, homeowners insurance and should you carry flood insurance? Because a lot of people are, right. you know, if you're not in a flood zone, you're not required. So should yeah. they require, should you, do you recommend that they still should cover uh, flood insurance? Yeah, so man, what a, what a day to discuss flood insurance and, and the benefits of that, right? I mean, wow, had some pretty rough weeks here recently. Yes. On the homeowner's side, I would say that, you know, obviously anybody that's going through a new purchase scenario, if you're a first time home buyer, if you're someone that's maybe paid the home off, but you're growing increasingly concerned based on recent events with the hurricanes or with flooding, homeowner's insurance can be a great tool to just pitch your life back together. Um, we don't always like to think of this, uh, think of this as like a, a rough numbers game and this claim and that claim. We really like to come alongside of our clients and help them piece their lives back together in these you know, really crazy times. So homeowner's insurance can meet many needs. Uh, we're gonna go over some details a little further in uh, about what coverages are offered and some things you should look for. But obviously if you're buying a new home and you're utilizing a mortgage company, you're gonna be required to carry homeowner's insurance, which also includes hurricane coverage. Sure. You know, on the flood insurance side, this question comes up a lot, and, and I would say that uh, we've developed a really good system for this, and the best way I can describe it on flood insurance is, hey, if you pull out your wallet and your driver's license has Florida on it, there's it a good chance you should probably just look into getting flood coverage, so. Yeah. All right, um, now look, I mean, here's the thing, FEMA, there's really no rhyme or reason at times to the mapping and to the way the state is laid out. And a lot of buyers make the mistake, unfortunately, of only purchasing flood coverage if the mortgage company says you have to. And, and that could be a mistake. 25% of all flood claims nationally come out of an area where it's not considered a high risk or a mandated zone. Wow, so if you don't have flood insurance, you're not gonna get coverage. So we have it exactly. in Parkland. There's a lot of areas on that map that um, People say to us that we we don't need to have it. I mean, right. what is flood insurance policy? An extra five, six hundred, seven hundred bucks? Uh, oftentimes, even less. Okay. I mean, I would say that the average flood premium can be as low as four to four fifty. Four hundred and fifty dollars a year is, is a great average premium. We recommend that when people ask us. I mean, obviously you're the expert, but people ask us, should we get it, Michael? You know, we got the quote. I always say you should. I mean, park when we're out by the Everglades. There's levees out there. You know, you think right. of New Orleans. What happened there? I believe it can happen. We've had some bad rain in the last, and a couple years ago, we live in Park on Isles, it came all the way into our garage, and that was just a regular bad storm. Yeah. And if that would have come through, we would have been protected in, on a flood insurance policy as opposed to not having it. It wouldn't have covered their policy, which right. is scary. Um, why should someone, when they're shopping for a loan, get a wind mitigation inspection um, during the inspection period or through that process? So really, the wind mitigation discounts, guys, I can't stress this enough, it's, it's critical. And it's most critical for any property that's built in 2001 or older. The idea is that the state of Florida has constantly changed the building codes. So in order to simplify and really streamline the insurance rates, a lot of those discounts are gonna be automatically applied with various companies depending on the year built. If the property falls into that category though, which a lot of ours do around here, 2001 and older, sure. I just can't stress enough the extra report is only going to cost about a hundred dollars on average we can sometimes utilize that same wind mitigation for you know five years if needed and the credits you get in that report are just off the charts it's going to save you at a bare minimum five hundred dollars but in many cases it's going to lower your premium by two or three thousand dollars just Pretty depending on where the home's located and, and that is on an annual basis a lot of times people ask you know, I decided to decline the wind mitigation report. This home doesn't have storm shutters, so I'm not gonna get it. That would be a mistake. The storm shutters or the impact glass, that really is only one of the possible categories on the report. Okay. In fact, there's other discounts given just based on the last roof update and also how the roof is attached to the trusses inside the attic. So there are many reasons why you should really get the wind mitigation report in advance so we can give you accurate pricing to factor your deal.
We always recommend when the inspector's there, we, most inspectors will offer a little bit of a discount because they're already out there. Right. I mean, I've seen it 75 bucks to 100 bucks, um, but sometimes people don't get an inspection done or they'll ask at the end, I need to get a mitigation or they'll send the company back out. Um, but it's very, very advisable to do it, get it, it's good to have it, and you can use it, as you said, in the future. Or if you do improvements to your house, you need to get another wind mitigation so that you could you get a new roof or get um, you know shutters on your house or any sort of improvement, you want to be able to get a mitigation. It's, it saved our clients thousands. You're right. I mean, you're, even on an older house, you should get it. Um, what are the most important items that a homeowner's insurance policy should cover? This is a question we get all the time. What do I need, Michael? Right. So to start off on the extremely low end, in order to qualify for the mortgage, a, a bare bones option would be to just simply cover the structure. The mortgage company is going to require that you meet a certain threshold to cover the structure itself, right? Because that's their investment, that's their risk, is, is just the structure. They're not always as concerned with your personal property or your contents, per se. So we can do any number of things. We can start at that level. We can show you some options on what it would take to maybe keep your costs lower for closing and then reevaluate it you know, after the fact or even years later once your needs change. But the most important components would be the structure itself, your personal property or your contents, and also your liability. Sure. You're always going to have a personal liability component that's attached to any homeowner's policy. And most people don't even realize what that can cover, what, what it really extends to. So uh, very important. You never know what your children are going to get involved with in the community. It could be something as simple as another child that's trespassing, whether you gave permission or, or not for them it's to be in your important. backyard, there are lawsuits that arise from that. So it's important. This is a good question we get a lot. What affects the price of homeowner's insurance and how do homeowner's insurance companies assess the riskiness of a policy? So really, when you're out there shopping and you're trying to compare one home to another, I would say the three most important factors in determining price for home insurance would be the age of the home, the location of the home, and then also what are those wind mitigation ratings that we were discussing earlier. Those three things combined are what really, I would say, account for 80 to 90 percent of the annual premium on one house versus another. It boils down to the age of the property, the location, and what discounts you qualify for. When they're trying to assess risk, they're looking at those same factors, and they're also sometimes considering whether or not you've had a prior claim on the property or whether the seller has gone through a prior claim in, in, re in recent years. That's good because we get that question, so get the wind mitigation. Tell your agent <laughs> you need a wind mitigation. Um, will my coverage grow with the, and we got some of these questions from a lot of our clients, will, our, will my coverage grow with the value of my home? So we discussed this earlier a little yeah. bit. Yeah, great question. This is one of the most common questions that I receive and what this really boils down to is that the simple answer would be no, not necessarily. A lot of times you're going through a purchase, let's say that you purchased a home for $300,000 and then you get there right before closing and you come back and say, Jared, I know we discussed these options and I understand my price and this, but can you tell me again why you're only insuring me for $240,000? I just told you we're paying three hundred. dollars The reason would be we are only able to cover the structure itself. So you may be purchasing a price, a home for $300,000, but we're probably going to be writing the dwelling at 240,000, just as an example. That would mean that we're covering the structure itself, and then the other 60,000 would most likely apply to the value of that location, the land, you know, the dirt itself. And when you talk about year over year, the only time that should really be increased is if we actually have some type of impact uh, locally with construction costs. Sure. If we have a shortage on materials, or maybe there's a widespread hurricane event or some type of other mass loss that would cause a shortage on construction supplies, then, then I would say that's a time when you should look at increasing the dwelling value. Okay, good answer. Should a policyholder speak with their representative on a yearly basis to see about pricing and updating their policies? This is important because Jared and his team, I have my insurance, I have a lot of investment properties and they handle them all. And what is unique is we reevaluate, we look, they're proactive. There are a lot of insurance companies don't want to you know, kind of push you to, to give you an idea of maybe you should start shopping or maybe you should, you know, question the price. I, I like it because they're honest. They're like, look, there's a better policy. I need to put you in for this year because we got to switch you to another one. We're, we're talking about an pro investment property earlier that I own and I, you know, I, I haven't had insurance on in a couple years and I'm going to have to pay a little bit more to then have to switch. So Jared's being honest and upfront. That's the kind of insurance you want to get because 
You might be just needing to get into a house and need to get the basic coverage, but you're going to, you know, he's going to be honest and tell you, his team's going to be honest and tell you, you're going to need to get better coverage. Your premium is going to go up next year. We need to, you know, assess this. So that's the difference. You know, you call up some of these companies, it's a 1-800 number, you're pawned off to somebody who, who, who knows. I like his company because they do a lot of policies, they're honest, and they get great rates. And they're shopping around to get you the best companies out there right now. And when they change policies, they're letting you know, oh, this change happened you know, during hurricane time, they're there for you. So, I, you know, I, I, I can't stand to tell you that enough, but, you know, I pretty much answered the question for you, but but let people yeah. know that you that you're out there, you know, assessing them, you know, every on a yearly basis, if not. Sooner. Yeah, for for two obvious reasons, you know, that you, you may need to change companies. It's normally going to boil down to either price or coverage, maybe both. So we do take a lot of pride in reaching out to our client base once a year, proactively, sometimes as early as thirty to forty five days out prior to the renewal. There may be years where we just say, hey, you know what? Here's the renewal offer from company ABC, and they've actually been pretty fair to us. We're gonna recommend we stay put for one more term. There are occasions though where we come back and say, you know what, this is kind of rough, so we, we're gonna shop this around. Here's another couple of quotes that we think we should consider. Let me know when you have some time to review these further and, and we'll game plan this. Aside from that, one other reason why you may wanna reach out on an annual basis is your personal needs change just based on life events. I've had clients that years later, unfortunately, had, had lost a ring or a piece of jewelry, and we were never aware that they owned it. They never bothered to tell us that, you know, hey, you know what, I, I bought my wife a new anniversary ring, and the diamond was worth 25000 and and unfortunately, in some of those cases, the value of artwork, collectibles, you know, antiques, and jewelry may not be covered to the level that you assume or you think that it sure. is. No, the, a lot of things, like we had this hurricane, a lot of people asked us, you know, what should we do to be prepared? Should we take pictures? Should we get on the roof? I had clients showing me their drones that they got of their roof. What should people do? Because at least the good part with hurricanes, we do get notice that we're going to possibly in the, be in that cone of concern. I, I hate hearing that word because we're already in hurricanes and I, right. you know, hurricane time. So what should policyholders or people with, you know, with insurance um, be doing on a, on a yearly basis, but also what should they be doing when we do have a storm imminent or possibly imminent, what would you recommend they do uh, to protect themselves when they might have to call for a, for a claim? You know, year over year, you should really think about some of those items we just touched on, meaning the jewelry, the artwork, hey, even firearms, believe it or not, most people just don't realize they're not covered to the limits that they expect. So. Mm -hmm. If you've made any significant purchase over the last year, that would be a great item to bring up with your agent, reach out, uh, just make sure, really clarify how it's covered, where's it at in the policy, what's the deductible, and analyze those purchases year over year. When it comes down to a hurricane or any type of catastrophic event, I do feel the number one way to protect yourself is to just simply walk through your home and take a five minute video. It can mean all the difference when it comes down to the claim time. You know, oftentimes, you really haven't had the insurance company out in your house or in your living room in, in several years. Uh, they may not have even come out and visited the home at all when you purchased. If that's the case, take the video, either upload it to some type of electronic storage like a cloud. Uh, for those of you that don't have access to that, you can simply email it to us, call us and ask how to get that data to us. We can also help you store it privately and securely on our own network along with the rest of your profile. I think we have a lot of information here. Thank you for these questions. I really think people today, we're in the summer selling season and people are buying and I think they get so excited about, you know, buying a house and looking and I think they call their lender, or, you know, and they get they get pre-approved. I think people do that a lot, but I don't think they call you as soon as early as they should. You know, and that's something I think people need to know. Yeah. You should really get your ideas. If you know a certain area, you know, we live out in West Parkland and, you know, East Parkland and West Parkland, different insurance. You have an older house, no hurricane yeah. protection versus maybe a new construction home. So it's really important that you have a good insurance person that's going to answer those questions. And we've had Jared, like, I'm, we're looking at three houses and one could be, you know, 20 years old, 10 years old, and five years old. I'm having him pull, you know, preliminary numbers to make the buyer understand what they're getting right. into. So th those are things that we would like to talk about. Yeah, great, 
you know, great information. Guys, look, we're, we're in the hotbed of homeowners insurance rates in, in the entire country. We have the highest rates across the board. You scared me when you told me. Uh, really, it's true though. I mean, the same property today that would cost about 3000 to insure in Broward County or Palm Beach, Miami-Dade, the same property can be insured for as little as $600 in Jacksonville, not even wow. to mention state to state. So for these reasons, if you're in the market, if you're buying a home, we really suggest not only do you want to reach out to Michael, but you want to help, you know, ask for help. There's a lot of moving parts here. There's a lot of things to think about. We want to do everything we can to come alongside of you and provide you with various options, even if it means multiple properties to compare up front. So Jared's contact information, again, he works for Access Insurance Underwriter LLC. He'll call, he'll come out, whatever you need, agents. We have a lot of agents here. You should give Jared a chance to try. I, you know, I, I like working with you know, really good people. And once I find a good one, I don't want to ever let them go. So we have, a, we have a few of that in our business right now. And Jared's one of them. Um, your website is floridainsuranceexpert.com. And to get in touch with Jared, you can reach him via cell at 561-601-5903. Any other, and your email is jmansell, M-A-N-C-I-L, at accessaip.com. So I appreciate you coming out. For Ask Michael Monday, this is our 31st episode. And do me a favor, like our page on uh, Park One Pair. Ask us questions. We have great questions we get every week from our clients that we've sold and you know they're dealing with a, a professional like Jared. These are the questions that I think that buyers are looking for in this, in this market right now, or they should be asking. So every week we're trying to come up with new ways to help improve your experience in the real estate business of buying, selling, renting property investments. We've looked at it all and we're going to continue to have some really great guests that come on to help you understand the process and why working with an expert team like ourselves is going to give you access to these people. If you need Jared's contact, I'll have him call you later. You know, it's after dinner, of course, but he'll give you a call. So understand this is why we bring these experts on. We want to give them the access to you to help in, you know, improve the experience of working with us because we don't do this alone. It's a team effort to sell and I have an amazing team. We have somebody behind the camera right now. We have great agents on our team and great staff and I, and I appreciate it every day. So remember that. So please like our page, please comment. We really are getting such great traction on our videos and we're gonna continue to do this because um, we really wanna continue to help our community um, with all of their real estate needs. So I hope you guys have a great night Please spend it with your family and we'll see you for episode 32 next week. Take care.